we have a lot of information from various sources on customers. We do not know what is relevant and what is not relevant, right. Uh, problem is also that the information comes from multiple sources in multiple formats, in multiple timelines, some comes instantly, some comes after some time, right. So, how do you identify um, factors which are important enough to make credit decision? Because there could be information about the customer that is not great, but it really does not affect your credit decision. And there could be information that is important enough that gets skipped over in a regular underwriting process. So, the challenge is that how do you put all this information together and uh, you know what we have been able to do is to put use lending analytics to kind of uh, uh, move to a situation of central underwriting. And I think the way things are going pretty much I think this quarter your numbers have to be based on end AS, right which means that you need to have a predictive model. I think one of the things that we have been able to do is to use lending analytics to come up with um, a predictive model for credit costs. So, being able to build models on probability of default and loss given default. So, you can possibly say ok, my LGDs look low, so I am going to take a few more risks than I, I would normally take and that decision happens at a portfolio la level rather than an individual underwriter level. So, the problem with, with the credit score per se is that it is not just not adequate to define or decide. Um, a lot of um, credit decisions that we need to take today, right. Um, there are lot more factors at, at play rather than the credit score which is based on historical data based on some products that the customer took in the past and has no relevance to the credit decision that you have to take today, right. And uh, using lending analytics what we have been able to do is to uh, build scoring models and, and actually scoring models are not even by product, they are by product plus geography. So, you know it will recognize that this customer wants to buy a Merck and our research. So, it will probably you know deliver a different credit score than the, then the customer is probably buying a Merck in Bangalore. So, I think if your marketing is not using analytics obviously you are losing out a lot. Just to make the point that uh, you know a lot more information is available. Uh, so, one of the easiest things that you know all of us probably have already done it is to decide which customer to call, which customer to just send an SMS, which customer to make a personal visit to on which customer to go legal right based on your, your data. Uh, you or some customers we do not even call, we just do a representation because we know that the customer will pay. So, we can actually significantly reduce the cost of our collections uh, with uh, analytics. So, the, the big advantage of all this is that we can service a lot more customers with our, uh, with our uh, existing teams. So, you know I think the advantage of analytics is that it can, it, first of all it is not a credit job or it is not a marketing job or it is not a collections job, I think it is an organization wide imperative. Uh, everybody needs to be familiar with analytics and everybody needs to understand how it works. How do you use data to make sure that you do better sales? For example, if you have enough information about the customer, can you make sure that you are pitching the right product to him rather than getting an application for something that finally will not go through, right.